here's a forced choice question to reflect on. Would you rather have much wealth and little wisdom or much wisdom and little wealth? probably can reflect on that even deeper in all of our lives. What do we really put first or want most? As you know, uh, having been in the Akron area of parishes for 35 years, I'm continually running into different people whom uh, I, they would come up and identify themselves as somebody from many years ago. And this was probably just two or three years ago, a fella came up and mentioned that I had done his wedding uh, about 25 years earlier. And uh, he looked a little different from his wedding day, but we kind of recognized each other. And like I often do, when we had a chance to talk, I said, well, how's your life been? You know, I know that your faith and college and everything meant a lot to you. What's all happening? And so he shared a part of his story. He talked about the fact that uh, after college and everything, he eventually got a job, got a great job, made a lot of money, had a prestigious position, supervisor of people, and feeling very confident in what he was doing. And then he mentioned, a lot of us do remember, the, uh, the economy uh, bottomed out back in 2008, and he thought he was safe because he had a good position in what he was doing. And so he had a positive sense. But then, lo and behold, within a short time, he was let go. Totally. Obviously, this overwhelmed him. It caused him, as he was sharing, to have a period of depression for a while because he wasn't finding a job right away. And he didn't feel very good about himself. All that going on. And, uh, and as he went through this for a while, because I asked, I said, well, what helped you get out of it? And he said, well my wife. And, and I thought of uh, his story even thinking of the scripture today, but when, when we hear that one reading, the second reading, uh, God's word is living and effective, and it's like a two-edged sword. Sometimes God's word speaks through family, spouses, and that's what happened for him, because while he was going through all of this, his wife, out of love, was saying, wait a second, you know, look at this. You're putting too much of your self-worth, identity, and security in making lots of money and in the prestigious job. Not that there's not a value, but look what's happening. And she challenged him and said, it possibly part of your feeling down and out is obviously legitimate, but part of it may be the number you're doing on yourself because you're too caught up in thinking, again, that self-worth, I've got to have money and be prestigious. And this fellow shared with me, and he said initially he was hurt by his wife. He said he couldn't believe that, uh, uh, you know, that she would be so insensitive for what he was going through. But eventually, because he was a man of faith, uh, he, he began to mull it over and realize his wife was right. Realize, as he shared, this was going to be a real opportunity. He didn't see it that way initially, to grow in faith and trust and to get back to what matters most. And they shared, you know, their love for each other, their children, their faith, and, and they were going to make it, and, and maybe they wouldn't have as much money, but that's not what matters most. In fact, uh, uh, we see in that, in that first reading from Wisdom, you know, that it's wisdom. The, the author there is saying wisdom is so much more important than silver or gold. And so he came to realize this, and it turned his life around. He also said, coming to a deeper faith, at the core of who he was and is, helped him beyond that period of time. Because he eventually did get a new job and in a, in a new position. However, it, he wasn't making nearly the money he had made before, which was a lot. And he said, you know, I would have grumbled about that my high, entire life, but with my wife's help and the look of faith, he said, I was very appreciative. I realized it's not about making the most money. And, and, and that made a difference, not only back then, but still. He recognized, hey, keeping a faith perspective, knowing what matters most with God and with love, he said, I need to remind myself sometimes of that, but that, when I do, gives me a real peace and an inner security. And, and then he also went on something else he learned. We can learn in the difficulties of life, not that God necessarily causes them, but he can certainly speak to us through them. He said that he realized at that time 
how selfish he was in other ways. And I said, well, how did that come? Well, when he wasn't working, the parish they were active in, a number of people said they were praying for him. Some sent him notes. Uh, some sent him possible job leads. And he went on to say, you know what? My whole time making that money and everything, I know there were other people struggling and hurting around me and, and in the parish. And I, nev I never lifted a finger. I never reached out to support. Uh, most of the time I was probably oblivious of hurting people right around me. And he said, when they did this for me, I realized I needed to grow in the ability to even notice other people's hurt and not to be so preoccupied with myself. So, a real growth. You can see probably why I brought up this, this situation with him because of the gospel today. There, you know, Jesus is talking to this, uh, this rich man. And of course, the rich man, kind of wanting to justify himself in a way, well, what are the commandments? And, 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 and Jesus told them, and he said, hey, I've been living those commandments. I'm doing good, you know? Jesus knew his heart, though, as he knows our hearts, too. And he knew that in this particular case, something else had to be done. He certainly didn't tell everybody. He met a lot of people, go and sell everything you had. But he saw for this fella, his primary sense of worth and identity was in the money he had. So Jesus wanted to go there to help him maybe get over his blind spot and notice this. And so he said, okay, well, you go, okay, want to follow it? One more thing. Just go sell all your possessions and come follow me. And the response, the man said he went away sad because he had many possessions. And in a way, again, it's not the problem that he had possessions, but in a way, that's what he was overly attached to. That meant more for him, and this is God's word for us today, meant more for him than following the way of Jesus. Where we all know, and we at least give lip service to it, that in Jesus we get the deepest hope and meaning and peace and joy in our lives. And so, didn't happen. And as we look at that, uh, we can all take a deeper look at, at, at who we are and, and the decisions we make and what we really feel about life and, and what matters most. Not just what we say matters most, but when we look at ourselves, yeah, what really matters most. I want to take a moment, and uh, Pope Francis uh, spoke about this whole issue of wealth and poverty. Remember, this month, we're talking about Respect Life Month, and, and, and part of that respect is for the poor among us. And part of that is knowing what we can do for our own sake by caring more about others and not simply being wrapped up in self. Just want to read a few brief quotes from Pope Francis. And by the way, this is on a blue page, and these, these are at the, all the various exits if you want to pick one up. <clears throat> All of us, whether we have a lot of money or very little of it, are tempted to place too much importance on our wealth. We can even mistake our wealth as our God, trusting our own savings for our ultimate destiny and security. Another one, if money and material things become the center of our lives, they seize us and make us slaves. Another, we have to state without mincing words that there is an inseparable bond between our faith and the poor. May we never abandon them. Another, how can it be that it is not a news item when an elderly homeless person dies of exposure, but it is news when the stock market goes down? And finally, I'll read this one. The dignity of each human person and the pursuit of the common good are, con are concerns which ought to shape all economic policies. Several other reflections there, too. And it's good, because sometimes we're not as mindful as that as we should be. And the Lord wants us to be mindful, not just to be guilty, but to be freed up and know what matters most and be able to give of ourselves and what we have that helps us not be less, but more of the person God calls us to be. You know, the, uh, one of the commissions that we've just started, it's called a stewardship commission, and it's all about how we are good stewards. And a lot of parishes, the focus on stewardship is on uh, uh, time, talent, and treasure. Now, we know here 
in terms of ourselves, and I want to affirm everybody here that we've, uh, we've done very well. You have been generous with the capital campaign, with the various collections we have every day. So we're not talking about treasure here, but we are talking about other ways we can share our talents. And to hear from us now, uh, Jerry Kelly is going to share uh, briefly from the Stewardship Commission something else that can be a, po a, a possibility and a good thing for all of us. Let's welcome Jerry. I'm sure she's a little nervous. A little nervous. It's the understatement of the century. Ever since Noah said, you think it's going to rain. <laughs> I am, yes, very nervous. As Father said, my name is Jerry Kelly. I've been a parishioner here at St. Vincent for 57 years, and you might think that sounds like a long time, but there are people in the parish who have been here for much longer than that. Their families uh, for years and years, and now we still have some of those families in our parish. I am currently a member of the Parish Pastoral Council and its Stewardship Commission. But first, before we get into that, I would like to read our mission statement to you, our parish mission statement. I think Father Norm would be very happy if we all could memorize it. He had mentioned that at one of our meetings. You'd think I would know it by now, but I would like to say, we are a welcoming Catholic community called together by Jesus Christ and guided by the Holy Spirit to live and share the love of God in our parish, and in our daily lives. That's what we're all about. And that's why I'm here today. Uh, you know, I would love this parish. I have tried in my 57 years here to, vol to volunteer in some capacity for all those years. I have made lifetime friends because of that. Uh, some of my some of the people that I'm friends with have been here and I see them in the Congregation today. We have been friends for 57 years and it's all because we volunteered for something that long ago That's back when our children were in the grade school and We were room mothers. We ended up being the group that formed the st. Vincent Elementary School Parents Association and it um, is now called community Community something. I'm not sure what that is. Community council. Community council, yes. But it's still the same group, and it's still going strong, and we're very, very proud of that. There's a flyer in today's bulletin. It's a green color. Father mentioned one that's blue. There's also a yellow one. The one I'm talking about is green. So we have a few rainbow colors this morning to read. And it explains about all of our ministries here at St. Vincent Parish. And we are trying to get more and more people to become more involved in, a lot, in some of the ministries and in some ideas that we came up with in our Stewardship Commission. For an example, say there's a little lady who might have a light bulb that went out in her ceiling. She can't climb a ladder. She can't change her bulb. We're looking for people who would be willing to help other parishioners, parishioners helping parishioners. Even just a small job like that would mean so much to her. Would you be willing to drive people to a doctor's appointment, a grocery shopping, a ride to church, anything? And there are much more larger jobs that we will have. In two weeks we will have a flyer that will, in the pews, we'll have a, a commitment form that you can read and see all the suggestions that we have for people. There's not anything that's, uh, that some of you can't do. We call it God-given talents. And I know there's a nice little thing in the bulletin in the green, on the green sheet today about uh, prayer. Uh, how you can be part of stewardship by starting with prayer. I know myself, I ask the Holy Spirit every Christmas and every Easter when we start to decorate the altar 
to please give me a new idea for this year so we will have a beautiful church for our parishioners for Christmas. Believe it or not, he does. I've been given the capability of being able to picture something in color and know that it, what it's going to look like when it's finished. I don't know, it has to come from the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's be clear, as Father said, we are not asking for money. We are asking for your time, a little bit of it, and your God-given talents. I know that all of you like to help other people. Of course we do. That's My parents instilled in my brother and sister and I that we are put on this earth to serve others. And that's why we're here. So if you would please consider serving Please fill out the form next, it'll be in two weeks. We will have a form in the pews. And please fill it out and say, yes, I'll be willing to help do. And you might have some hidden talent that you don't even know about until you start thinking about it and praying about it. Got to look at my notes. Oh, yes. There is a song in our hymnal that we sing occasionally that I love. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard what God has ready for those who love him. What better way to show God our love than to help other people that are in need? So thank you for your time and your attention this morning. Please ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and to think of the ways that you might be able to help the parish and other parishioners. And may God bless all of you. And I hope in two weeks we'll just have a great response to this and that you realize how important it is to help other people in the parish. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Jerry, you didn't need to be nervous at all. And by the way, uh, I know she said 57 years ago, she was a two-year-old and she... <laughs> Priests don't fib, do they? Oh, no, I wasn't even six months old yet, Father. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Hey, thank you, thank you. Just briefly to mention, as she said, that uh, there, there's this a green flyer in your bulletin today, and it lists a lot of the parish ministries that we have currently that you might be involved in. It also mentions those uh, uh, ways to come closer to God, pray for the parish. Next week, you will get, she was mentioning this, uh, a, a flyer. And that will have on the various things we can do for parishioners, like a skills bank. That uh, there's people out there, she mentioned changing the light bulb. Hey, I need help with that. But uh, anyway, that, uh, that we can do. So you'll see that next week. And then in two weeks, you'll have that flyer that has all that information in it. You'll have already seen it this week and next week. So you'll know, and we'll give you a, ta a chance to check off some possibility of, of what you do. Here and out among parishes, and even for that matter, in the wider community that we serve. The gifts we have to share and give them to others. Uh, so keep that in mind. And now... Because it's all grounded in our faith, let's stand and profess our faith. <laughs>